Let's talk about the 2024 College Football Hall of Fame ballot. And I have taken five of those names of the more than 200 plus on the ballot to talk about just which one of these dudes I think is kind of amazing. And four out of the five guys here are on the ballot for the first time. And that's significant, right? Because it is a high barrier for entry to get into the College Football Hall of Fame as a player. The first is you have to be a first team All-American as designated by an NCAA select selector. So if you hear some version of first team All-American and each one of these guys, just know. Matter of fact, we might not even mention it because now you know. So let's go one through five here. And at number one, obvious for me, Virginia Tech quarterback Michael Vick. Okay. I can give you the stats. I can tell you he was 11-0 in the regular season. I can tell you that he took Va Tech to a national championship game. I can tell you he blew out two defenders' ACLs in the same damn game. Or I can just tell you, hey, look, we had a rule when we were playing NCAA and Madden. Wasn't nobody allowed to play with Virginia Tech because Mike Vick was that quarterback. He had cheat code. That was impossible. You're not going to do anything with a dude that takes a three-step drop and flicks the ball 70 yards down the field. You're not going to do anything with a dude whose 40-yard dash is so fast that he is a joke in Donald Glover's Atlanta. You're not going to do anything with a dude that went to jail, came back, and still code in the NFL. You're just not going to do nothing with that. I expect Mike Vick to get in in the 2024 class. Voters, do your part. Number two here, let's go with Pittsburgh wide receiver Larry Fitzgerald. Again, Pittsburgh. I didn't care nothing about no Pittsburgh. Most people in Pittsburgh don't care about the Panthers. They'd be like, we got another football team other than the Steelers? For real? Yes. And not only that, number one was a walking, talking catch. Matter of fact, they put Larry Fitzgerald on the cover of NCAA to make up putting Joey Harrington on the cover of NCAA. I don't need nothing like that to never happen no more ever again. But you get it. That dude was absolutely special. 2003 Big East Offensive Player of the Year. Had 11 school records in just two seasons at Pitt. Also, my favorite Larry Fitzgerald thing. The man had more tackles in the NFL than he had drops because they kept the statistics. And anecdotally, Larry Fitzgerald never dropped a pass. I can't point to no stats in college. I can't tell you where to find that stat in college. I just know that didn't nobody see Larry Fitzgerald come down with the, without the ball, right? That's what we're talking about. 1,400 passes that he caught in the NFL, 29 dropped, 37 tackles. That's ridiculous. Number three on the list, Terrell Suggs coming out of Arizona State. Now, I can tell you a lot of things about Terrell Suggs, but what I would lead with is he's still chasing you. It, 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 he ain't played football in a uh, doggone year, 10 years. He's still chasing you. You you are still going to go down if you have the football because that's what that man was. He had 24 sacks in one season of football, 31 and a half tackles for loss in one season of football, 2002 Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year, and has ranked second all time in tackles for loss and sacks with 65 and a half, 44 sacks in his career. I mean... Outside of Vontez Burfick, I can't think of a player I love more at Arizona State, and there are a lot of good players to choose from at Arizona State. But something about them dudes that be chasing down these quarterbacks or pointing a finger over the top going, it's your day-to-day -day. out there like Alvin Mack telling stories, that does it for me. That's Terrell Suggs. Number four on the list, Ole Miss offensive tackle Michael Orr. Michael, you protect his blind side. That's, that's who we're talking about here. Now, when the movie came out, I was, I was apoplectic because I read Michael Lewis's book, and Michael Lewis's book is really, really, really good. It's not to say the movie's bad. It's just I'm an English teacher. The book is always going to be better. But also, this was a three-time All-SEC performer, and he captained 47 straight games for Ole Miss, and he is the reason that you know Ben Jarvis Green Ellis's name. I take that back. Maybe you know it because Bill Simmons called him law firm. But I knew him when he was just Ben Jarvis at Ole Miss. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, some, something about that just appeals to me. And Michael Orr had a great career in the NFL, and I'm very excited to see him on this ballot. And I'm sure everybody associated with that book is, too. Number five on the list, I actually had to fight about this because uh, our social maven, Javion J Duncan, is always trying to tell me, like, RJ, I need you to whittle it to five. I'm like, I can't. I can't. Twelve-year-old me is so mad right now because I have Peter Warwick, Coming out of Florida State at number five. 
I wanted to put Ward done. I couldn't put Ward done. I had to put Peter Ward because Peter Ward can do stuff like what you're watching on the screen right here. Cheat code. Like, what is this? You, you bring the man down. Make the tackle. You know, it's one thing about football that I absolutely love. Is you got a football coach on the sideline going, son, how could you let him run by you? And you, as a player, have no choice but to say, I didn't let him do a damn thing. That's what Peter Work was. Peter Work was so cold at Florida State that Bobby Bowden could afford to leave Randy Moss on the bench. I can't make you understand better than that. That's how cold this first team, All-American, consensus in 98, unanimous in 99. Peter Work made me a Florida State fan for a liggity split second dog. Like I was, I was all in because what nine could do with a football was amazing. And remember, Prime was still playing. And this was the closest thing to seeing Prime that I had ever seen in my life because I wasn't around for Deion Sanders playing at Florida State. I was around for Peter Work playing at Florida State to say nothing of work done, say nothing about Florida State was the squad in the 90s if you want to talk about swag. I'm, I'm just trying to let y'all know, kiddos. That's what I'm trying to let y'all know. All right, those are just five of the more than 200 people on the ballot for the 2024 class. Induction takes place or announcement of who's going to be inducted takes place in December, but I think they're going to have the votes tally by like July 1 of this year. They're just going to sit on that news until the season is over with. So take a look. Tell me what you think. I'm sure I left somebody off that is worthy because, again, it's college football. All we do is make monsters that ah come out and scare the hell out of your team or superheroes that put their team on their back, and these are all those guys.